So welcome back to the Fast Track Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your host, Tara Bullman, and I have a really special guest here today to interview that is going to blow your mind. So let me introduce her and we will get going. So Ruth Miller is an award-winning uh, actress turned a leading ad and funnel strategist and is the secret weapon behind the success of legendary influencers. Ruth's script writing background as an actress and her funnel and ad strategies have seen her clients sell out their programs, courses, and live events, achieving multi-five and six-figure launches. Her company, Boulevard, with a legendary launch stream, dream team of experts, has over 50 years of combined online marketing experience with an award-winning background in the film and television industry. So please join me in welcoming Ruth Miller. Hi, Ruth. How are you? I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Tara. Oh, not a problem. I'm so happy. And thank you for coming on and serving us up with all kinds of great things and helping to demystify this whole idea of organic reach and organic traffic and paid traffic. I think this is really going to help women fast track their business success. Yes, definitely. So yeah, so to get started, you know, I would, will you share like, you know, how did you get into this? Like, you know, some people talk about, you know, the data side, you come from, it seems like an artistic film side, what made <laughs> you get into the space? It is a very unusual leap. I get that. I just love the power of language and copy. Mm. And I have been so lucky in my life to have worked with incredible actors like Tom Hardy. Um, I've been in West End plays. Um, I've done award-winning films. I've worked with some incredible directors. And the most important thing is I've read incredible scripts. Mm. And I understand and I have learned how to unpack the story and a formula behind the story. And it just seemed to transition really well for me, copywriting um, mm. and the power of copywriting in the online space. And um, I developed a formula for copy that really comes from the hero's journey, which I may, you may have heard, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. And I've just managed to, well, just develop this formula that I use with every single client that comes to work with me. And now I'm teaching it as part of a group program. That's awesome. That's so great. So for people who are like, you know, wondering, like, what is, oh, so, you know, Terry, you mentioned organic versus paid traffic. And then we've got, you know, copy is the common thing amongst both of those, right? Yeah. It's like, so for those who are like, what is she talking about? Copy, <laughs> copy, copy, like, you know, in the world of online business, like copy, well, just and it doesn't have to be online, it's business in general. Copy really is the words and the writing that you use to share your stories, your offers, your everything. So it's a very like strategic way to be able to get your message out there. And so when we think of copy, you know, from a organic and paid perspective, can you like explain really what the difference is between organic and paid? And then we'll kind of talk about how women can maximize the balance between the two so that they yes. can really fast track. Yes. Well, People buy on emotion, that's the key. So language, when expressed correctly, triggers an emotion in people. And I found that if you lead with the vision as opposed to the pain, so it was a very old school way of marketing a few years ago where we would always, are you struggling with this? Are you hurting? Do you feel pain around this? And like, I found that by leading in that way, you are selling the pain. Um, and I found that your marketing, whether it was paid or organic, irrelevant of whether it was paid or organic, um, it just fell short. But if you actually lead with visionary or epiphany language, I have seen results and engagement just shoot through the roof. And the difference between paid and organic is that people have this myth that ads are going to do all the work for you. And that's not true. 
um, the ads keep you visible and they do the job of automating and shifting belief patterns for you. And then what you layer on top in terms of your organic, your promotions, your, you know, your daily lifestyle stuff just adds that extra layer to nurture people. And the, when you combine the two, it's just phenomenal. It really is. I love it. I love that. When you talk in terms of like visionary copy or a visionary headline, I'm sure you've worked with plenty of clients to help transform the maybe old school way of, are you struggling with, or don't you wish you fit in your skinny pants? And, you know, like all, you know, all the kind of uh, leading questions, you know, that we see all the time. What would be, can you share like an example or two of what would be a visionary copy headline example so that the audience can understand the difference and and notice how they feel? Yeah. So It's time to feel good in our own skin and feel beautiful from the inside out. It's time to celebrate our bodies and celebrate ourselves as women. And it's time to join the movement of other women who are embracing every part of their beautiful self. So good. That is the opposite too. Yeah. No, I could see it. I mean, because when, yeah, you know, they always say like, you know, drill in on the pain and and (laughs) twist the knife. I've heard like, especially in the male online marketing space, it's like, you know, really get to there and then twist and where I, it's old school. It's it's old school. It's old school and it's bro marketing. It's like a little kind of thing that, you know, I I do love to serve women. And there is the, there is, don't get me wrong. There is the place to talk about the pain, but when you talk about the pain, you're using it to align and go, I know where you're at because I've been there too. I can relate to that feeling of, you know, unworthiness, you know, that place of feeling afraid. And I don't want other women to feel that way. So that is why I put together this program so that other women don't have to go through the same experiences like like I did. Right. That's a different way of of shifting that kind of messaging. Oh, yeah. And I think, especially I think women resonate with that a lot more. Because as soon as I start seeing where it's leading with all the negative, and that's all they're talking about, it's like, you know, like I just get like, oh, here we go again. What are you going to sell me? Right? Yes. Yeah. So instead of an, an invi- filling it like an invitation to come join in, like you said, the movement, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And you know what, we, you know, this is how like, you know, your women who are listening here, we're here to talk about how to fast track. Mm-hmm. I have seen you probably next time you're looking at your news feed, now that you know this, or you're tuned in to that kind of a key form of marketing, you can see it from well-established coaches that are credible. And then you see some rising star who's coming up through the ranks, who is sharing that kind of messaging. I have seen entire audiences turn and buy her product over the successful leading industries leader in that field, you know, in such a short space of time, because it's the language and the emotion that that person is sharing is so much more enticing and captivating. Yes, and refreshing. And especially in times that we're in now and uncertainty and all that kind of stuff, like we just want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And I can totally see that. And I feel like, you know, especially in the expert space or influencer space or whatever you want to call the space that, you know, personal brand type of stuff that a lot of women and men are in. And it's like, you want to look at, you know, there are people who have been mega successful in this space. And it's like, but then if they're not willing to like understand this new shift and that, you know, they're going to lose customers and it's like, and it makes this a wide open space for somebody who's never ran any type of paid ads to be able to just play at that level. And I think that's a really awesome opportunity for every woman business owner. So, cause you don't need to like, you know, feel like, well, I haven't been in this for 20 years. So, well, you know what? It's a open new way of doing it. So the the old days of emailing your list Mm -hmm. and selling a hundred of your programs are over. That doesn't exist anymore. It's content, value content, sharing value content. And so is the kind of the old school idea that you put an ad out and someone signs up 
or your email list and you give them something that even that in itself is nothing compared to the other objectives that you can use with your Facebook ads, which is to just share value driven content using a little known thing called the reach objective, which is super cheap video views where all you're really doing is you're just putting out your core content of beautiful value driven pieces. And then you can actually tell Facebook how to schedule them so that you become famous in the feed to a small group of people. And that is incredibly powerful and inexpensive. And of course you're tracking everybody through your cookies and you haven't even needed to ask for an email at that stage. And so it's just, again, it's like, wow, that is a refreshing way of marketing that is very 2020 and not a lot of people even know how to use that function or are using it. So that That's, is kind of exciting. That is very <laughs> exciting. And what's really cool is I think oftentimes when we think of Facebook ads or whatever ads, Google ads, you know, they're, every social media platform has ads, right? So it's like we think of, oh, it's so overwhelming and like, oh, I need to have a big, huge budget. I had interviewed somebody recently and we had talked about, you know, that even some of the big name, a male marketer, I don't remember specifically which one, but said, you know, you can do all these million dollar launches, but you need to be spending 900,000 on Facebook ads, you know? And it's like, what? Like, you know, we want to be profitable with women entrepreneurs. And in order to do that, we don't need a million customers. Like no. Ruth was saying, like no. you can no. do a reach campaign, record a video or do an amazing heartfelt post, right? And then share that and just go for the reach. And then like, and it doesn't have to be huge and it doesn't have to be expensive. So it's a great way to put your toe in the water, you know, for lack of better words. I love that. Ugh. Yes. And you had a, I was listening to one of your previous podcasts where you had this sales, this amazing sales lady on, um, mm -hmm. and she was talking about how the power is in the follow up. And if mm -hmm. you can imagine just if you're using these very low cost, strategic ad campaigns but the content is so rich and then you're retargeting that audience who have either viewed that post or watched that video to a certain length 95 percent of that video or more they are hot they are already hot so if you then retarget them into just your facebook group you don't even need to leave the platform of facebook group or instagram to create 10K, 20K, 30K months, because then it's just you reaching out, knowing where to look and just nurturing your audience organically. And it's that combination mm -hmm. of paid and organic marketing that I have seen fast track people. Oh, so good. This is such good stuff. I mean, I think there's such a relief that comes with Ruth being able to give us all permission to not have to, I don't know, like go 100% all in. All like, in. No, yeah. No, 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 all Cuz that's exhausting. We no, don't have time. Do it in stages. Do it in stages. Do it in baby steps. You know, and I hate the word lead. These are people, these are human yeah. beings. And every single person that is coming into your world is worthy of a conversation. And this is another thing. It's about the long-term vision. I mean, the women who are nailing it and building you know vast wealth are the people who are really aware of the big picture and are really aware of just where everybody is and that is you know they're not just data-driven numbers let's get a thousand people in and then that's just kind of no no that's not the way yeah we're looking for customers for life i mean yes i yes. always say like as a type of coach that i am i'm a catch and releaser i know my strengths they around let's build the strategy the plan let's get you going i'll hold you accountable to it you know the max i usually i work with people for a year you know in a lot of cases because my promise is to fast track the five-year plan in less than a year so we have to first create Amazing. the five-year plan then you know we go and put the plan together, which is what I call the business map. And then it's like execution. And I have some clients that were like, they want to stay on and whatever, because they're continuing to get results. But then, you know, but I don't make it a big, like, you know, icky thing to be like, well, you can never leave my sphere. No, I'd like to coach you out of me because then you're ready for the, even the next level. I know, you know, we know our lanes and that's super powerful. And when you, 
when Ruth was talking about strategy, I mean, just having your, you know, this overall strategy around your paid and your organic reach is super important, but you have to understand even the bigger business strategy on where you're going with things. I, and, I couldn't agree more. And that's why it's so holistic. That's why um, if you want to fast track, like you're saying, you need somebody like you coaching them. You need somebody like me and the team. You, you, you know, you need, you need a team of yeah. people who are all, like you said, just encouraging you and, and helping you see where you need to be. Because really where you need to be is you need to be showing up for your audience um, and everything else should bolster and just help and support that. And it needn't feel hard work i mean right. there is work there is work and you can't get that starry-eyed syndrome with ads like with you know and i'm sure you agree you are, see this kind of strategy you have your own strategy like this in your own business and other businesses you have to keep your blinkers on and you have to follow through on that one thing that you do so well and just n tweak it and 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 those that tweak it and have the patience they get always get where they want to go always this is so even when you're thinking in terms of you know driving traffic and whatnot it's about it's not a sprint it's a marathon and if we're looking for short little wins and i'm doing a launch and i think if i do facebook ads and instagram ads i'm going to get that hundred thousand dollar launch and like she said no it's really it starts way before that and so that you can balance your organic reach with your paid and maybe this is something I don't even, I definitely don't know. And I'm curious about like, if somebody just went with an all organic strategy or they went with an all paid, you know, strategy, like what tends to happen? I have seen someone who goes with an all organic strategy to sometimes get the same results as someone who's gone in with an all paid strategy. And I, and you know, like you said, like the thing that works is what I love is when I take the person who has got results from an organic strategy and then plugged, look at what there's something that they are doing that is working so well. And my job is to just recreate that or boost that, you know, that is the beauty with ads and with them um, content and all the rest of it. It's about how can I maximize what she's already doing? So they're the ideal customer. They are the absolute ideal client for me because they have proven to themselves that they can sell a product and they know how to nurture and sell their product. Um, where you're not ready for ads is when you really haven't validated your product, you haven't sold your product before. And I would never ever suggest that you do a big paid launch with a product that you haven't sold necessarily before. But what I would recommend that you do is do what we call an evergreen list building or visibility campaign, whereby you are just attracting and captivating the right audiences for a future product that you can then develop out. And then that would be a great transition. Does that make mm, sense? Totally. And it's, it's the equivalent of, you know, what she's saying is like, let's, you know, just have some consistent, like list building, you know, we, people talk about list building. It's like, okay, great. How do I get people on my list? Do I just add them if I get their card or do it? No, it's like you, what she's saying is we've got to have a consistent campaign that gets you visibility that draws them into you closer so that when you do go to offer up something, it's going to feel genuine and beautiful versus the people. And we all know the people who yes. only reach out to you when they want something. Yes. Right? Yeah. And they um, know that we're not customers, clients, they're not stupid. You know, no. we are they are we are savvy online now. And we can spot the bullshit. We can really say, you know, what's lacking integrity. And then also we can feel what is revolutionary and exciting and new and refreshing. And we're naturally drawn to that, which makes this time that we're in in one way, you know, super scary for a lot of people, but just probably one of the most exciting times I've ever seen in terms of the opportunity for people if they want to dip their toe in and get yes. and really go for it. I, I am a late developer. You know, I only got into the online space late. 
and I, you know, I, you know, I know how quickly it can happen, you know. So, it, you know, the beauty of this that we're talking about is, um, if you do this right, your way, my, the way that we're talking about this holistic way, you're going to get there, no matter what. You will get there. You will get there. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, we think often, you know, cause even, even for me, it's like, I haven't, I've grown my business pretty cheek to cheek up to this point, like mm-hmm. the relationships, live events, you know, I'll do some virtual master classes and stuff here and there, but I've been just as guilty at not doing any type of consistent visibility campaign or, you know, I've probably done what I've dabbled in Facebook because like so many of us women business owners, you know, I struggle with the perfectionist syndrome. And, you know, for me, it was like, if I'm going to get into Facebook ads, I need to understand it. I need to like, you know, this is like the analyzer in me. It's like, I get to understand it. I want to try to like, how do you maximize it? And what's the budget? And what's, you know, I get all geeked out. Like we were talking before the podcast interview, it's like, we can totally get geeked out on some of this stuff. And it's like, but then that feels like a full-time job just to like manage the Facebook ads. And it's like, okay, I also need to serve my clients. I also need to record the podcast. I also need to do all the things, right, that it takes to run your business. So for the person who's like, you know what, I'm totally vibing with what Ruth is saying, you know, but I haven't even, you know, maybe she's built her business cheek to cheek or you know, maybe she does do some stuff on video on Facebook, but she goes live from her personal page or something like that. It's like, you know, what advice do you have for her that want to take it to that next level so that we can have more of this balance of organic and paid? Yeah, it's for me, this is a real passion of mine because I want to just pick up on what you said. For me, you know, I'm a bit of a control freak. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't want to be in like, like I've got a team who goes in and works my ads now, I, I, but I want to understand just the basics. And this is the thing. This is the thing. When you hand off your ads, you know, I, I, so many people come to me and they've been burned before because they've either DIY'd it themselves and they've got a, they've got a big program and it's been so overwhelming or what they've done is um, they've hired this outsourced the whole thing and given them a ton of money and go do this for me and they've not even had any involvement whatsoever and that doesn't work either there are little tiny little benchmarks like just key little things that you can learn that you don't need to have like a Mensa education in the back end of, of business manager you can just some people don't even know that you can even that there is even a back end of Facebook and just knowing that there is a back end of Facebook and just understanding how to simply boost a post the right way, how that you can actually go in and create audiences, that is like the most powerful thing. You can go in and create audiences and do the simplest of campaigns that will give you the maximum return. And just little benchmarks, just, you just need to learn just a couple of little things that will tell you if your ads are working and then you can get the hell out of there and you can put it on repeat and just turn it on and off. So I would say for a total newcomer, I would say, look at your core content. If you understand, if you can go and have a look and see what pieces of content, like curate your own content, what am I putting out there that's getting tons of comments, likes, and shares, you know, because there's some beauty in that. And then I would consider putting together just a really simple retargeting content strategy. Just collect your audiences and retarget them just simply with a few different pieces and you would be so surprised. I've seen people, you know, create 10K, you know, within a couple of weeks of just doing a little, tiny little bit of retargeting with a video, doing stuff that they're already doing naturally, but just adding a little bit of budget behind it can Mm -hmm. see that's it. It doesn't have to be complex. So do the video based on what she said, your core content. And that may be someone listening. It may be your step one is I got to get clear on my core content. Yes. Right. Cause it's like from a branding perspective, you know, I struggled with this for years. I make no secret about it, but mm-hmm. as a, as a strategist, my job's to go in and find the gaps in your entire business model. So it's like sometimes that people think they have a marketing problem, but they really have a sales problem or, you know, they may have a revenue problem because they're just not clear on something that's foundational and they're confusing their audience. So when she says core content, 
think it's like reverse engineering, right? It's like, yeah. think of what you want to promote, whether maybe it's a $99 product, it could be a $25,000 mastermind, yeah. like whatever that end is, come up with what's the core content you need somebody to understand so that they feel in alignment with you, right? And then this is how I would interpret it, but please, yeah, please right. correct, please correct me if I'm wrong, but like, cause I haven't been great at all ads side of things myself, but cause I was the one I paid people and I'm like, well, that was a lot of money that went down the drain <laughs> and I don't know if it worked. I don't want to laugh at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. All we can do is learn from it. Yes, please run my ads. Oh, that's funny. The people who joined my program are all people I have a relationship with who've been to a live event of mine. Okay. Duh, this ad thing, it didn't work for me. So but I love what you're saying. So it's like, what I would think we would do is you come up with your core content, you know, your pillar content, which I'm sure is like a whole thing in working with you. It's like, okay, what are the most simplistic things that you can share to get people to the awareness of, oh, I've never thought of it like that or something that makes you unique. You may record a, a video and post it on your Facebook business page right? Yes. As opposed to yes. your you, personal you page. Just you just nailed it. You okay. identify, do your research and identify if you've done your research, and I'm sure you said that that's the most important thing. It doesn't matter if you are a seven figure earner or if you're just starting out in business, just take a week and just ask your audience emotional driven questions. So that's questions that you cannot possibly, that they cannot possibly answer with a simple yes or no. Like imagine your life six months from now, imagine just for a minute that money was limitless, that you could just choose to be and do whatever you want to do. Where are you? What are you doing? What does it look like? What are you smelling? What are you, you know, who are you with? And then questions like, what are the three things that you're struggling with the most? And why do you think that is? What do you think you need to see a shift in that area? People don't ask those questions. We as coaches, we serve up what we know they need, but that's not necessarily, they didn't even know about, it. like that's me talking and selling split testing. Now that would be so boring. Nobody knows or cares about split testing. What they do care about is how they're going to find the down payment on that dream house that they want. And so that's it. It's, it's understanding the language and then creating content around it that's going to shift those limiting beliefs, meet their objections, so that by the time they're at that post or that content, that, that's the final bit of your automated content, they're already like, wow, I'm, I'm in. I, I love this. I, I'm with Tara. I'm in. I'm wow. Then your sales is just tipping them over the edge let's go. Are you ready to go? Click, you know, click here. And it's like, boom. But we don't, do you ask like in the video, do you go for the, the ask or are we just simply serving and sharing and then always, retarget and then. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I, I always do the first day. I always do It's like a date. Mm. The, the first stage is your, I call it like take the dance floor. It's yeah. a, look at me. I'm in my beautiful dress and I'm just having a good time. And I want you to share it with me and and I'm not asking or doing anything. I'm just giving and I'm, we're just having some fun together. And then the second phase is, uh, so that's the awareness phase. And then you move into the consideration phase. That's at the first date. So then you're retargeting them with a little bit more content. You're serving, you're giving them a few, you're, you're speaking to their problems. You're providing a few solutions and then they're moving into that preference. So the third phase is they're in the preference phase and they're like, I'm picking you. I want to run with you for a little bit. I, I think I think I like being in your space for a while. I'm going to be here and I'm going to buy a few things from you and I'm going to test you out. And then they move into the loyalty, which is meet the parents. <laughs> and you've got them for, that's the meet the parents phase and you, you've got them for life. And they're like your number one fan ambassador and usually your collaborator and your partner and your podcast buddy and and you Absolutely. bring them up and you raise them up with you. Yes. I love, I've never heard the analogies like that. And that I just need, <laughs> I've heard the first date and like, don't ask for marriage on the first date and like, you know, that, but the way you described it is like beyond, like that is so cool. So the dance I'm showing up, look at me twirling around in my dress Yeah, and then come and like, oh, okay. Like who is this person? Then it, yeah, that's a beautiful way to look at it. And then they meet the parents, like. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's, that's so cool. And I mean, and from a campaign standpoint, that doesn't have to feel overwhelming. I mean, that is literally what it could be four videos, three or four videos yeah. 
that you're, and when she says retargeting, like we explain what retargeting means. Sometimes I feel like in our industry, we just throw around words like copy and retargeting. And, yes. And we assume that everybody knows yeah. <laughs> anybody that's clicked yeah. or watched or taken an action on that post. So anybody that's interacted and there's so many, oh my gosh. I mean, I, this is where I geek out because when it's like a rabbit hole, once you discover that it's like the, the what is it the pill you know like the the pill in the matrix or yeah. what, no, it's the matrix, whatever where you like realize that there's this whole world that you didn't know about and yet just and just understanding that there's a few little things that you can do it's actually simple you're just again it's my thing is copying audiences i get very excited about audiences it's just building audiences who do certain things and then you just boost the post in front of that audience and it's, it's really not that complex yeah I and wish I could redesign Facebook ads manager I wish I could go in and yeah. you know, ship it all back and cover it in I don't know I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I agree. And then it's like, you know, then you go into, what is it? Like there's the Facebook, like, you know, the boosting of the post. Everyone's like, don't ever touch the boost button. It will mess with the algorithm. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, oh, some of this advice, like it's so conflicting, which then like confuses women. Business I think aren't. they do it deliberately because they want it. I don't know. I feel like that's why I love being a, a woman, like a techie woman and <laughs> yeah. artistic because I feel like, you just feel super powerful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, my husband always says, sometimes he just has like this most profound way of saying things. Cause he's, he's an engineer. He's very analytical, but then like something, a quote or something will really resonate with them. And, and I forgot who he quoted, but he's like the biggest lie ever told was it's not really that simple. And that's to kind of keep everyone scared to even attempt to go for this where it's like Ruth is giving us the permission and at the end of the day you record the video which there's a whole mindset stuff that even needs to happen for some women who are like you want me to record a video I don't know what to say I like I, I feel fat you know all this the fears that come up right and I say it in probably every podcast episode but it's like hey you want to know your insecurities open a business they'll all come out so you, you may have to work through some of that stuff just to record the video and then you'll record it and you realize, oh, I didn't die. And oh my gosh, people are actually engaging with this content. And maybe I've well, impacted you know, someone. Oh my gosh, you just get me so excited there. Because one of the th reasons why women feel so afraid to go live, if you ask women why they're afraid to go live, most of them, I would say 99% say, I just don't know what to say. I don't want to look like an idiot. Yep. I don't want some, I just don't know what to say. And the thing is, oh my God, can you imagine if, just doing that little simple survey, the just taking that step and listening to your audience, they give you all of the answers and then you know exactly what to say. Like I know exactly what to say now. And sometimes I have it all written out. You know, I certainly, you know, I, I, I have my crutches. I have my things that I need, but that when you know what you're going to say, it's a totally different and to me, the main strategy, like when you roll up, you know, an entire, you know, business model and look at the strategy, it's like when you know who your perfect customer is, then, and you know what you sell, right? You have these basic, the foundational pieces in place and you know, the things are struggling with, but you also know the aspirations. I mean, what else do you need to do except for go you don't build, do anything. build the audience? Oh, she likes Oprah. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in my audience that she likes Oprah, you know, and it's like, it, she, it, oh, I love this. I love <sighs> you. You know, I love this. And you, it goes back to what your husband is saying. It is that simple. Mm -hmm. It really is that simple. And then what is so wonderful about that is the other thing that women are scared of is they're worried what their ex-boyfriends or their family members. But if you do exactly what you just said in the way that you just said it, your audience <laughs> is exactly the audience and the reaction and the engagement goes through the roof and you think, why on earth wasn't I doing this before? And yes. now you're like, somebody stopped me. I'm now hooked. I, I will give you a perfect example of this. So <laughs> I'm, I have an obsession with Chanel brooches. It's like a thing. I see them as little art pieces. Oh I have, my God, I, a, saw that. I have like this, you know, 
boxes of what they're in cases and that's glass and you know and I stare at them all the time and you know I mean sometimes I if I go out and wear a dress I'll wear three of them at all one time because I love them and if I go on a trip it's like that's always like my souvenir I'm always and it's it's not even about it is about the collecting of it I see it as like for me it's art I also see it as I really love the hunt. So if I'm in Paris, I want to like go to hunt to all the Chanel stores there and be like, oh, I found it. Cause I have like a wish list of all the brooches I ever want. And uh, you know, they only show so many online and it's like this whole little cultish community of people who like are all about Chanel brooches. Right. It's like, it's a thing. And you know, I go in and I remember the first time I was like, I'm going to buy a brooch. And I, I went in for the first time and, if I hadn't have known when I go into Chanel, like you just look around and they have maybe a couple brooches from their collection and they're just on display and you're like, well, I don't want one that's like a, a sailboat. Like I just want this CC, like just a classic brooch. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> and if I would, <laughs> if I wouldn't have went in and known that when you go in, you go, hi, I'd like to see all your brooches. And then they bring them out. This is like, I'm telling you a big secret right now. But it's like they bring out the display boxes of brooches, Chanel. just all the brooches. Yeah, they're all only going to display the ones that are part of the current collection for the novices of, yeah, of course, like they, you know, but they have hidden brooches that they're like, ah. and sometimes they'll actually be like, well, here's, we only have it and it's one, you know, and it's from the two year ago collection or something, you know, and so every Chanel has different ones. And so so the, it's part of the hunt. So I'm telling you this because like, it's an obsession of mine. When you think of a core content pillar, like it's something that is me, but I was very scared to put it out there because I didn't want anyone to think I was like too bougie or fancy or look at how snobby she is with her Chanel brooches. You know, I also shop at Target and, you know, and stuff too, but it's like, it's my passion. And so for the really one of the first times I've dabbled in introducing the brooches to, you know, as part of my personality. Yeah, your brand. And, yeah. and I did that from, I think it was yesterday, I may have posted something on Instagram, like, here's my latest baby, you know, I got it. It's part of the Art Deco collection. It's so blingy. I was missing like, and it's so beautiful and I love it. And, you know, and I was just like, I love the hunt. I love, and I was like, sure. Huge that engagement. Most, yes, yes. That gave you the most engagement. And this is the beautiful thing. Like, let's go back to your, that aspirational stuff, that personality stuff, that lifestyle stuff, that stuff makes you totally unique to anybody else out there. I don't, nobody else is doing anything remotely. And it's aspirational. Yeah. It really is aspirational. And you've got a lot of women, I wish I, I want to, I want to be, you know, musing through Paris, little courtyards and looking, shopping for my, my Chanel brooch. Totally. I mean, <laughs> I get to do that. <laughs> and I'm at a point now where I have, you know, the, I have my a signature program that I, I have in beta right now, but I'm launching it bigger in a few months. But as part of that program, there's going to be monthly hunts that we can do, right? And then for people who do well with it and actually finish all the things, I have no problem buying them their own Chanel brooch, right? So oh it's gosh. like, right, that's it. I'm just like, I want all the women who ever want a brooch that treasure it, you should have it. But maybe if brooches may not be your thing, that's totally fine. But like, I think every woman should have something beautiful in their closet that makes them feel really good. You know what's so beautiful about that as well? It's like, that is what I call the epiphany, the visionary thing, because people think that they want that million dollar or a hundred K launch or that 10 K month or whatever it is that they want. It's, it's irrelevant. That's not actually what they want. Mm -hmm. It's what they're going to do with that money. It's what they're, it's sometimes it's even the exit strategy. Sometimes it's just, you know, like I've got a thing about a Burberry coat. Like I'm just obsessed with Burberry coat. For me, that is just like the height of luxury and, yeah. you know, and, and traveling and so that's the same thing with the messaging it's like you know that's the stuff that's the stuff that is the vision that should always be at the heart and the center of everything that you do 
Oh, so true. And don't be afraid to put it out there because I was for years and I, I had a, uh, so I've been secretly collecting them like in my boxes and everyone I name, like if, so yeah. if, if I ever refer someone, they, and they give me like a referral fee, I'm like, okay, thank you. I'm going to buy a brooch. I'm going to name it your name. So it would be like if I referred someone and you're like, hey, Tara, thank you for that client. I would say this is the Ruth, right? So oh. I like, so I look at him and I see, I see friendship. I see connections. I see, you know, just travel that I've been yeah. on. And it's like, okay, that was from Paris. That one's New York. And like, I have this relationship with each one of them, which is why I wear like, if I could wear all of them at one time, which I should probably do a photo shoot with that. You know, it's a little psychotic. Like sometimes my husband looks at I it. See like, with this, I see you with this gorgeous <laughs> yeah. turban, kind of like with Ooh. the brooches all over. Yeah. yeah. Gorgeous beautiful. Oh, I love it. It's just a topic that I'm super passionate <laughs> about. And so, but my biggest fear came realized I had a live event. I think it was last year and I had a brand photographer there that was giving tips on brand photography and she was showing some of my new images, which, you know, she had one that was, she's like, bring your brooch box. And I had brought it and of me like, Oh, over this. Box. And she the one lady raised her hand. I was like, you know, that's great, but it looks really high end and it doesn't resonate with me because I don't care about that kind of luxury stuff. So I feel disconnected from Tara because of that. And it's kind of like knife in the heart, twisted, like the biggest fear realized. It, that, and just kind of like, wow, someone is judging me because of my passion. Right. And I thought, oh, wow. And then the more I thought about it, and, you know, of course, I sit and overanalyze things, but, like, you know, I was like, that's okay. So well, she's not know, one of my people. No, and that's she's not okay. one of your people. And, and, you know, and it's wonderful. You've made it. Yeah. I feel like you've made it. You, you know, you've made it. You, you know, you have to polarize. You're going to, yeah. you must be polarizing. You're go Facebook, Instagram, social media channels, they are polarizing. They love, the more polarizing you can be. You know, don't be afraid to state what you love and what you don't love, yeah. you know, what you like and what you don't like. Um, yeah. Because the more you sit on the fence and the more you hide, you know, the harder it will be for you to attract your, your people. Yes. And I want the people who are happy for me when I get the brooch, not the one that's going, I can't believe she just spent that kind of money on a pin for her dress and when she could have been donating that to the a food bank or you know it's like I don't want that in in my life as you we you know we all have our things so we just don't we don't want that it's negative it's energy also, around us it's also assuming so much so it's much like, and I, and what the greatest <laughs> thing was is at that live event and I was like what you're also not seeing in there is you know I there's some heirloom brooches that uh, I also have in there that were my great grandma that came over from Russia and you know, and like, they're really old. And, I, you know, I like brooches, but I love Chanel brooches. So, you know, <laughs> it, it is what it is. I, I oh love that. Goodness. So it, in wrapping up a couple of things, you know, can you speak to the fact, you know, about money and how you can actually use money as a resource to make more? Yes, I feel so passionate about money. I love money. I'm not afraid of saying I love money. I love and I say it like a mantra. I love money. I love money. I love money. It's so easy. Money comes easily. It's amazing how easy it is to make money because I understand what it's like to have none. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be in lack. I know what it's like. I have had a huge shift in my own personal life. And so I really align and I understand what it's like to come from nothing and to be in a place where you have got palpitations about money. And, you're, and all I remember was, holding on to anything that I had fiercely with tight fists and you know holding on to it and holding on to it and holding on to it but money is is meant to flow money is it's meant to come and go and you're meant to have fun with money you're meant to buy Chanel brooches with money you're meant to donate money you're meant to give money and you're meant and money is to be used as a resource to make more of it um, currently with Facebook, you know, every pound or dollar that you put in, you get four pounds or four dollars back. Think wow. About wow. Think about that. Wow. And right now, especially like aren't costs low as low as 
they've been in a while or something they like are, that? They are crazy low. And he, but they, I want to make this very clear as well. Yes, they are. There's a 40% drop. I've seen a 60% drop. But I preach about this that I don't really care about the low cost leads because it's really irrelevant compared to your product and what you're selling. Like if you are selling a 25K retreat package or a mastermind package, you're not going to care if your if your cost per lead, which means how much it's cost you for that person to join your email list or whatever action that you've asked them to do, your webinar or whatever it is that you want them to do costs 10, 12, 15, 20 dollars. If the return on that is 25,000, no brainer, no brainer. But if you are, you know, a yoga coach and you have a beautiful membership and you want to build a membership over 12 months at that, you know, you want 500 people in your membership and your membership is 27 pounds or dollars a month. You know, you're not going to want to be paying $20. So right now, if you're a, if you have a low cost, membership you definitely want to be jumping in the, the, the ad pool right now because I have got clients who are seeing like 30 cents 50 cents per lead where like usually it's a pound or a pound 50 for that industry and um, which is crazy low but you have to think about your margins you really yep. do need to think it has to be it has to make sense that's good we uh you know and I, it's true you know it's like you got to understand the end game like what you ultimately the perfect solution for them and i you know i call it your signature offer mine's the fast track accelerator what's what's yours ruth you have a signature offer i would imagine or something program well, i have a, service? Yes, I, do. I have an, an online star is born yes which is yeah and so it all <laughs> yeah so you know that if this is a great solution for you know, this woman, man, da, 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 they like Oprah, they this, you know, they follow this person that, you know, are this age, you know, they live here, like, that's what she talks about building an audience. And then you can, we have the tools to create this and put it into our life. And, and then make some magic happen. And like with people who are your people, and you don't need a million of them. That's what's yeah. cool. Like, yeah. I maybe work with 50 to 75 maybe 50 to 75 people a year that's it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like not a ton mm -hmm. uh you know and some people are even you know less than that and then some people have a more low cost higher value model or maybe they need the 500 people in their membership in order to make their million plus or whatever their goals are so it's like we have to be you got to know this and then it's like reverse engineer and you know learn from someone like ruth that can help you make these baby steps like I'm a big baby stepper so it's like make these baby steps so that you can see it work and then you know for every dollar or pound as you say which is much more eloquent you put <laughs> in you get four times that back like it yeah it's a no-brainer <laughs> so I love it so good so, so before we wrap up I always ask everyone since this is the fast track podcast what is your number one tip for women who are looking to go faster and to reach their business success what's the number one tip you have or maybe something that you know you had to experience the hard way that you wish you would have known what's something you could share with that woman right now it's all like I said before it's um Everything is always working out for me. Everything is easy. I deserve this. Um, this is coming to me. I, I, I feel it. I know it and it's already written. It's the language that you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. It really is. I think the higher or the more raised consciousness or the further that we get in business or the more successful we get, you realize how important it is your self-care and the language that you say to yourself. And if that's in place, all the rest is just relevant. It's right. The rest <laughs> works itself out. And as it control always works freaks, out. raise your hand if you're a bit of a control freak. I think it's <laughs> most women entrepreneurs, you know, it's like we have to learn to trust and say like, you know, use the language that we want or that, you know, and really just feel it through affirmations, through, languaging and careful what you you know being careful and in, intentional about what you say yeah and then the rest works itself out and we have to trust that and that was something I had to learn it took me 
probably seven years in my business to learn because I, I was, we were joking beforehand. I think I said, I'm not woo woo, but I'm woo. And so it's <laughs> like, you know, but it, it is really a balance of that. And that's a big secret to people that you see just cat, like catapult quickly is because they've done that type of work for themselves. And it's really powerful. I was a get into the business strategies, then figure out that it. That, oh, that was me. Yeah, I, yeah. That I have me. to be gentle with myself. What? Yeah. What? But it was part of our journey, so that we can help other people and understand exactly. the frustration. So I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, we don't have to have all the answers, and we need to learn how to trust. <laughs> so that's beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> so Ruth, this was such an amazing interview. Thank you so much for all the wisdom you shared. How can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more? Uh, thank you so much. Yes. So I actually prepared a little gift for your audience of a little calculator tool so that they can have a play with some of their signature products and have a little look at some of the return that they can make with ads should they like to play around with that. And you can get that at boulevardmarketing.co. Boulevardmarketing.co. I love it. I'm going to go grab it myself because I'm super interested in, you know, taking those next baby steps to do ads even myself. So this has been fantastic. We'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, you can go to terrablemancom slash podcast and we'll have a link to boulevardmarketing.co as well as a transcript and all the good stuff on this episode. So Thank you again, Ruth. You were fantastic. And I just appreciate everything that you're doing to help serve more women business owners. So thank you. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. Thank you very much. There you have it. Another episode packed full of strategies and motivation that you can use every day to put your business on the fast track. For a podcast recap and more resources, visit terrabowman.com. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast and get what you need to help fast track your five-year business plan.